I sincerely apologize. I've been talking this whole time and didn't realize I was muted. I I was going to say, you know, are you muted? But, but you know, <laughs> maybe you're just going through your slides for fun. I, I apologize. I, okay. That makes so much more sense. Uh, uh, was, was there any questions with the agenda that I plowed through much earlier? I'll take that as a no. Um, well, I didn't see it. I will go back. I'm currently showing the agenda in our intermeeting slides. Yes, I didn't pay attention before the audio started. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, any any concerns, comments, questions with today's agenda? One more time. Okay. And then one more once more with the administrative um, notes. Myself and Eva will try to do what we can. If anybody's willing to help, that would be greatly appreciated. We're only looking for action items we need to take. Thank you, friend. Let's see the notes and I'll click on something and hopefully it doesn't mess anything up. Okay. Um, so Jim Shad, as most of you may know now, uh, passed away on Friday. Um, greatly missed. He was very instrumental in starting up this working group the first time in this current time. Um, anybody else like to say anything? I just wondered if anyone had any more details. I haven't found an obituary yet. They posted the official obituary to, I think, the ITF discussion list, and it is re-hosted on the ITF site. I will oh, put it is the link now. in the okay. chat. Thanks. So, uh, so this is Lawrence, and I do have something I'd like to say. Um, when I first started looking at at Cozy about four years ago, I was like, "What's August Sellers?" And uh, but oh, you mean this guy is working on ITF standards and has a side business running a winery? And um, uh, I thought about that, and that that and. Uh, uh, I was thinking about retiring and leaving Qualcomm at the time, and um, uh, so it was a little bit of a model for me. Uh, like that sounds good. I, I like that idea. <laughs> so, so I I was always kind of intrigued with with uh, Jim for doing that, um, and I'm I'm kind of doing it now. So a uh, similar similar thing. So I um, and then the other thing is uh, when I looked at. Cozy, I, I to me it looks like a standard that will uh, endure for a really long time. You know, it's got on, a, on a really seems like it's on a really solid basis to me. A lot smarter than SMIME, for example, and CMS. Thank you, Lawrence. A anyone else? Well, this is Hank. Um, I just want to add to this that when I uh, started working or uh, coming to ITF meetings, uh, uh, Jim was one of the first uh, people that I went out to have uh, um, one of these famous uh, lunch uh, meetings with. <laughs> so, uh, so we 
we had a famous, uh, very, very, very good stake, and uh, we had a very uh, continuously over the past meetings of I don't know, six, seven years, continued this tradition to go out once in a while and have a stake. And I will always remember that fondly because while he was always good of spirits and always good of heart, he was always very. Uh, has a very um, snarky comments. Uh, he could look a little bit grumpy, and he was very, very forthright <laughs> with his opinions. And I think that made talking to him actually easier, because um, you didn't have to dig through all this pretentious stuff. You sometimes encounter. Sorry, no offense to anyone here, but sometimes this happens. And with uh, with Jim, well, basically, <laughs> no, that didn't happen. And that was always something I will remember fondly, because. Uh, uh, yeah, it makes me smile today when I think back, and I think that's the important stuff to remember. Thank you, Frank. Um, uh, for my for myself, this is uh, Matthew Miller. Um, when when I first started working on security related things, the ITF, Jim was incredibly patient with me uh, as I was trying to understand how various cryptographic algorithms got got applied and used and, and abused. And I really appreciate, I really truly appreciated that. At that point, you didn't already know what you were talking about. A lot of people would diss you. And he took he took the time to help help explain and help walk walk through things. All right, um, any, anyone else? Uh, Joran here. Sorry, I, I joined late. Uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. OK, good. Um, I joined late, so I missed probably all. all uh, so I just want to chime in into what, what the last two statements, which I heard. Um, Jim, Jim was always so focused on the technical stuff. He was never political. That that, that was so so re so relief, so much relief that you you could focus on the technical discussions. And he was really helpful and patient. Um, yeah, it was really great. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any anybody else have something they would like to share? It's okay if you don't or can't. All right. Uh, um, Let's go ahead and move on. Um, so, as, as we all know, Jim was responsible for just about every working group document that we have today. Um, and, and we have still in flight. So, with the ADs, we've worked out, the chairs have worked out um, some plans of how we're going to move, progress these on. Um, starting with our, our Core documents, the 8152 bit struct and ALGS. ALGS is already in the RFC editor's queue. Uh, but if there's anything that comes up, we will we will go through that. Um, struct, there's still a few nits that need to be addressed from, uh, I believe the only ones left are the ones from Ben. Um, so those will be addressed. Uh, I'll be making those edits and we'll, we'll continue to progress that document. Uh, uh, the X509 document, which is uh, also with the ISG and, and is marked with revised ID needed, um, Evo is going to be making um, edits to that. Um, to progress that. Um, the, the two algorithm documents, the hash algs and, and 8152 bis algs, like we said, are, are in the RFC editor's queue. If any edits are necessary, we'll bring them up with the with the Working group and the chairs will make sure those get up 
get applied and directed back to the uh, uh, the the IRC editor. And then finally, the countersign document we just uh, adopted. Um, Russ Housley has um, volunteered to uh, work as editor for this document, um, and so we'll take take him up on that and. Um, a new revision, making note of that, and with the memorial to Jim will be included, uh, will be coming sometime soon. Um, for now, Russ will be marked directly in the in the internet drafts as the editor. When we go to publication, we'll be looking to remove his name and leave it solely as Jim. Um, I sent this out uh, yesterday. Is there any comments or concerns with this with this approach? Uh, um, so, hearing nothing, we'll assume that this this works for everybody, and this this will be the path we will move forward. Um, we don't have specific timelines for some of these things, but we'll work those out with the ADs as as rises. Um, next up, we have with certificate compression. There's been a quite a bit of discussion on on the list. Um, I wasn't sure if uh, Goran or um, if you had any comments you wanted to make here or anything you wanted to talk about specifically with uh, where that's where that's headed. So, um, yeah, I, I think we got, a, got good comments uh, as always uh, from Jim and uh, yeah, we, we need to get back on those. I think it's, it's very helpful and uh, um there was there was also i mean there was there were several responses one was on the on the, on the draft uh which i think we'll uh we'll address in uh, pretty soon uh, and then there was sort of the the charter uh proposal um so i got the task last uh last week okay maybe that's a separate separate topic so i i don't know if there's anything more to comment on the uh on the certificate compression, I suppose we come to the, the, the charter later. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so no, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. So, so I mean, there was basically good, good, good comments about uh, about the different message fields, and and John responded to a few of those, and we are working on responses to the others. So, um, yes, that that's where we are. Okay. Um, with that, I, I mean, unless there's any other comments now around certificate compression, I think we can move on to the charter. Um, again, it's, we've seen a lot of discussion um, and a lot of notes. Um, and do you have any, uh, would you like to finish off your comments? Right, thanks. So um, we sent a proposal at the 25th of September, I think. And um, I didn't get, as far as I, I can see, I didn't get any uh, specific uh, comments on that one. So maybe if people would like to discuss it now or or later, could, could we bring up that text from the mail or... Um, how do you want to work with this now? We can do that. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. I found it. Let me find a way to share it without sharing. So I, while you're showing it, I could just give the background. So the there was a charter drafted by Jim in um, uh, a couple of months ago, or a few. I mean, straight after the the last ITF meeting, I think that was was drafted, 
um, or maybe it was even 100 uh, ITF 107. And that charter was the, discussed last last uh, interim. And, and then we had some proposals over email by John that was uh, discussed in in that interim. And um, people were happy with that those changes, those those participating in that meeting. And then I, I got a task to redraft uh, one of the sentences uh, in in that formulation. Uh, in, in, uh, reformulate one of those sentences. Um, and basically, uh, yeah, so there is an old and a new in the mail I sent out. And the old is actually after incorporating John's proposed changes. So that was what, what we discussed last meeting. And the new yes. is, is what I, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I see it. Um, almost, there is some icons at the left hand side, uh, which is covering part uh, of uh, my, uh, don't know if that's possible. To, well, but anyway, so there is a, so, so the old, in, if you compare the old and the new, the old, uh, the first, the three paragraphs, the first and second, last paragraph are the same uh, in old and new. And the middle paragraph is replaced. So uh, emphasizing that uh, the main objective is to define this method of compressing uh, X509 to be a specific, specific profile uh, that is lossless and can be expanded back into normal X509. But that also another objective is to explore the possibility to parse and verify the compressed X09 encoding directly on the target device. So using CBOR uh, directly. And this removes the need for compression, decompression there, parsing. parsing. Uh, and the associated overhead and code, which is relevant for embedded implementations. So that's essentially the new new part of the chart. And then I remember, remember now there was also discussion about what we should call these um, uh, this variant here, the second objective, whether we should call it native or natively signed, uh, which I think was Karsten's proposal, and probably makes more sense. Uh, right, so that's that's the proposal, and uh, any comments are welcome. So this is Hank. So I. Uh... I approve of this message, I think. And so uh, I like the uh, uh, addition of the, uh, uh, in the view of the third uh, uh, paragraph. It's, it's concise, which is very appropriate. Also, I like Carson's uh, comment on the uh, uh, native uh, nature here, uh, that it's uh, probably, as I should say, natively signed. Um, it also is not arbitrarily limiting ourselves. Uh, that is always good. And it's still in scope, and therefore, uh, uh, I hope uh, you're in a good exploration. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks, Hank. Right. Any other comments? Uh, I'm still, so this is Ben Kaduk. I'm still wrapping my head a little bit around saying both natively signed and compressed X509. Uh, to try and get those to sit in my brain at the same time. So that reminds me, there was actually another comment from Jim about what do we mean by compressed? Um, so what he was complaining, saying that this is uh, this is actually uh, an encoding uh, rather than compression. But that I mean that's yeah, that's a matter of terminology. So it's it's the CBOR encoding that that is. Um, making this that is we, that is sort of in uh, causing this compression to happen. So it's it's not any. Yeah, uh, uh, this is saying. So I think compression here was intended to be a intuitive term. So like uh, we are not changing the structure, the semantics of the structure itself. We are just. Uh, 
realigning the uh, encoding here, basically, uh, realigning the content so it's getting smaller. So that is why this is not just a simple re-encoding, it's, it's basically a compression and, and it's, a, it's a result because it's smaller. But, but effectively what we do here is a canonical transformation. We can transform it from uh, uh, the bigger size into the smaller size and then canonical reconstruct the original from it. So it also behaves like a compressed uh, item and we decompress it in the end. But as, of course, we, we are not using any compression algorithms here. It is just a, a, a re-encoding um, effectively. So, so that is maybe not the best choice of words. Uh, I think it was chosen again um, because it is an intuitive understanding on what this, uh, what the effect is, but it's not describing the method very well. So one term we could use here is efficiently re-encode. Yes. So, that's, that's so, so that would be like taking the expiration field and, and encoding it like a, in a Seaboard type one tag or finding some smart way to encode the uh, key use in a uh, in an integer or something that's a lot a lot uh, tighter and easier than OIDs, right? Right. That's that's the sort of thing we're looking at, right? Correct. Right. Yeah. I think I have a good handle on the compression part and or efficient reencoding, whichever we want to call it. Uh, and so then to get to the sort of the the native signing part, uh, the idea is is sort of that we are going to define this procedure for the reencoding, and then just say in some in some cases, you can apply a native cozy signature to the re-encoded stuff. Um, and in other circumstances, you'll need to use the original you know, dur-encoding signature and undo the re-encoding to verify the signature. But the the actual transformation process between the dur-encoded ASN1 and the re-encoded CBOR is going to be the same for both of these sort of flavors of compressed certificates. Um, yeah, so compression requires some helper structures to uh, enable this uh, canonical reconstruction. And these uh, consume uh, bytes uh, because you have to retain some uh, guidance how to reconstruct the native format, native being here the ASM1 uh, format. Uh, so you can omit that by, by learning, also by basically using the structure or reusing the structure that we create here for the uh, air quote compression, and then uh, uh, take even out the, the all the helper structures that we might need to uh, um, retain a re canonical reconstruction here, and, and go native. And native means uh, we are never intending to reconstruct a... a uh, uh, ASM1 certificate here. Uh, we can we can convey the same information just with Seaboard and and uh, save uh, fuel stack uh, on the uh, receiving endpoint uh, ASM1 and Seaboard that is, and also uh, uh, therefore at the end consequently uh, sign it uh, on uh, on the uh, Seaboard level with uh, Cozy. And so that is something that would uh, uh, not require the uh, receiving side to know ASN1 at all. But it would retain the exact semantics of the uh, certificate uh, and the information uh, intended to be conveyed by the certificate. Right. So, so I guess the... go ahead, Kirsten. Um, whether you need to be able to have the uh, efficient reencoding be reversible is kind of orthogonal with whether you want to do native signing. So there are different reasons. Um, you want to do native signing so that uh, a constraint device can can check the signature without going uh, back to DER. Uh, you want to um, you want to include the the uh, original DER signature so you can do that. Uh, you can reverse the the. Uh, Efficient encoding and and uh, the legacy device can can also check this. So the, the, it might actually be useful to include both, which is maybe kind of radical, but uh, th that would certainly be a possibility. 
But as soon as you don't have a DER signature, um, you no longer need to have the encoding reversible. And uh, this is what, what Hank alluded to, that you then can leave out a little bit of, of the uh, uh, technically redundant information that is only needed for the reversible re-encoding. OK, so I guess the when we talk about the associated overhead and code, that's overhead both in terms of CPU cycles and in terms of bits on the wire, potentially. Yes, and, and of code size. Yes. I, I guess I one thing I'm, I'm trying to get in my head is uh, the that we are trying to have a lot of overlap and sort of commonality between the mechanism that preserves the DR signature and the mechanism that applies a native cozy signature so that in some sense we can be calling it the same body of work um, just with different sort of flavors or variants for the different use cases because uh, I think that will be an easier thing to sell to the ISG than saying we're going to do two similar but different things um, that don't necessarily have intrinsic overlap. Ben, thank you. That is exactly the point. So if you're doing the uh, uh, the more efficient encoding, um, this is basically 80 to 90% of the work if you would do the uh, uh, native signing and the we don't have to reconstruct thing side of the coin. Uh, so there's a lot of synergy here and it's not only the overhead uh, it's also the uh, the semantics that we create here. So the, the the lessons learned how to encode more efficiently would apply to both uh, tracks of this coin, both sides of this coin, I think. Exactly. Yes. All right. Um, so Ben, what what change would you like to see to the charter to address to address this? Um, so the the main concrete thing that comes to mind was sort of what I tried to mention just a few minutes ago about clarifying that the overhead can be processing overhead and uh, encoded space like bits in the encoding overhead. Uh, so that would probably just be a couple words there. I'm also sort of pondering over in my head another potential clarification that I don't think I can actually uh, say clearly quite yet. Uh, but that would be sort of along the lines of motivating the native cozy signatures with something like um, once we've already done the work to get the, the compressed re-encoding, um, it's very simple to be able to just apply a native signature to that for cases when we don't have the legacy DER ecosystem to interact with. Um, and I will see if I can ponder that a bit more and come up with actual concrete text that would go in the charter. But I also don't know that it's strictly necessary to have something like that. Emphasize that this work is to um, take advantage of uh, of the code and like the footprint and memory efficiencies of co of Cozy. Yeah, like additional efficiency gains are possible when you do not have a legacy uh, DR system to interact with, and that can be done by you know, doing these three things. Or two things. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's a lot of code and complexity saved, having done implementation work on both fronts there. Okay. Uh, and Ben, you said you will try to come up with some pretext to get there. Um, yes. Okay. This is saying thanks, Ben. That's really appreciated because I, I think we want, we want to uh, 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 um, explain ourselves in a, in a again confusing way. 
uh, it should really point out why this is useful and not why this might be redundant. <laughs> that is probably not the most reasonable cause of action. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, any other uh, comments? Um, or, no, I'm scrolling through. Uh, Goran, do you think, uh, Goran and company, do you think um, we could get an update on your proposed text to the list and then we can turn this into a PR against the, uh, against the charter? Sure. Should I, uh, ben, do you want to start, Ben, with, with some text and I can incorporate that? Or should I start making a PR? Um, well, I, I have it open on my desktop to submit the, to get the PR and, and approved for um, the earlier text from John Matson. So I will get that done before the end of my day uh, here in the US. Um, so should be available. Um, to submit to open a PR just after that. I think if you can open a PR directly in GitHub, that would be the most efficient. Okay. So, so but my question was really to Ben. Ben, Ben is going to propose some text. So, um, should I wait for that, or should should Ben and I talk offline, or how do we collaborate? I think we can, I think we can open the PR now. Um, we can hold it pending Ben's note, and then we can incorporate that. Um, whatever way is most efficient. Um, okay, fair enough. I'll do that. Is that for you? Yes, that sounds good. Okay. Any other um, comments or questions with the uh, with the charter? All right. Um, well, without that, um, I think what we will do is once we have these PRs um, approved, um, submitted, and we merged, we will send the text around to the working group um, directly again and get feedback um, for where we can go. Um, depending on uh, how long it takes to turn the this latest cert compression, um, our uh, get it merged will be dependent on when, what the timeline for that is. Uh, uh, is it reasonable to think that we can have that all um, done and ready uh, this month before the end of October? Just ask anybody so, to any comment. Yeah, so I mean, I, I'll fix this this week from my side, and uh, I'm happy to do more updates if necessary. Um, so hopefully we can all have that done within the next uh, week or two, um, and we can send that around to the working group one more time. That'll be, that'll be a chair action to send to send the work, to send the charter around one more time um, to this working group to see what else needs to be done, and then we will um, uh, we'll send to the. Uh, we will we'll submit to the ADs for rechartering. Okay. Um, I think that actually is going back to slides. Hopefully those are still rendering for people. Okay. Um, is there any other business we would like to discuss today? We still actually have 20 more minutes uh, in our scheduled session.
All right, I'll take the silence as there's nothing else, um, nothing else to bring up. Um, so with that, I think we are adjourned. Um, the next uh, um, meeting that we have would be with ITF 109 uh, in November. Uh, um, schedule still, the exact schedule still to be determined. Um, so I guess we will uh, we will all talk synchronously again then. Until then, we uh, we will see our word on the mailing list. Um, any any other thoughts from anybody? Uh, if not, we will adjourn. Thanks, Matt. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. bye.